Aleluia. I personally love this time of year, not just because there's a there's a lovely festive atmosphere and a holiday atmosphere all around, but also because of the fact that I love transition. I love when God does things where He, he takes you to new things, where there's new experiences and new life. And, uh, I'm not one of those who love ruts. I don't like ruts. Ruts is an elongated grave. I like to get into the new things. I like new wine and new wine skins. Amen. I don't like holding on to old stuff. Uh, although, you know, my wife will differ when it comes to that as far as my hairstyle is concerned because I've had it for the past 45 million years. So, <laughs> but besides that, you know, I like new things. And uh, I'm challenged sometimes by some of the things, but uh, eventually I come around. But I don't know about you, I don't, I don't like to stick with the old stuff when, yeah. when God is busy doing something new. Amen? Amen. Amen. God never changes, but His, but His methods do. Yeah. And this morning I want to talk about a very, 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 very interesting subject. And you know there are times that we as pastors, we love to bring the deep spiritual truths to our congregations and the deep things of God, the contemplative things, the deep calling unto deep. But this morning, it's one of those messages, you can have the body language that, um, that Reuben has got this morning. Where is lack of children relax? Now that's that kind of message that we're going to have today. Today I'm going to talk about something called common sense Christianity. All say with me common sense. Common, common sense. sense. I have found that in this walk with God, there is a place for common sense. Amen. Thank you, Colette. Because it is important that we as people of God believe that, yes, we live from our heart, but God's given us a brain. And it's a good thing to use it from time to time. Amen. And God expects us to use it all the time. And we need to employ common sense in our daily walks. Now, let me say where I'm coming from. You've heard me say this before, and it's just the perfect entrance point of this message this morning. Jesus walked on the water. And you've heard me say this before, guys. Come on. Jesus walked on the water. Of course He did. That was 1% of the time. 99% of the other times He got into a boat. Many Christians want to walk on the water 99% of the times and 1% get into a boat. I have found that life consists of the everyday things that we have to get through. This morning, I'm going to challenge you on a few of these areas. And I'm going to say to you this morning, take careful attention, and pay careful, careful attention rather, to what we're going to be saying this morning concerning common sense Christianity. The day-to-day -day stuff that we have to get right. Now this, the way I put this together, as you can see, I put there common sense Christianity for 2018. Because I know we have, and we said it last week, we have aspirations for 2018. But I want to ask you, are you also going to take care of the common sense things? Amen. Amen, Brother Alvin. We are going to take care of the common sense things as well. So we are going to look at common sense, which God has given us. And our first slide there that we're going to be looking at this morning is, um, when you look at the parables, I just thought about it. When we talk about common sense and you look at the par parables, most of the parables were pictures that Jesus drew in the imagination of the disciples especially, but then also on the crowds, when he taught them from the parables. Parables are common sense teachings and preachings that Jesus gave. That's really what it was. And yet, some of the simple didn't even understand it. But if we look at the one that's so popular that many of us always talk about, is the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is, so is, there was seed that fell on the path, and the birds ate it. Common sense. <laughs> Are you with me with this? Yep. Jesus is preaching such a simple message here. He says there are seed that fell on the rocks. There was little soil. There's no root system. So the sun scorched it because it didn't have roots and it died. Common sense. There's seed that fell among the thorns. The thorns grew and choked the seeds and the little plants. Say it with me. Common sense. Then there was seed that fell on the good ground and it produced some hundred, some sixty and some thirty Common sense. Then I thought about other statements of Jesus, where he said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Guys, that's not deep. <laughs> that is not deep. 
And he said then also that a candle that is lit must not be put under a bushel. Why? Because there's no oxygen and it's going to go out. Say it with me. Common sense. So this is what most of our daily walks are all about. And I want to deal with a couple of points this morning. This is one of those lacquer ones where if you've got a pencil and a piece of paper, a pen and your notepad, you can write these things down. It's going to help you in 2018. If you come to me for counseling in 2018, and it has anything to do with any one of these points, I'm going to say, where's your notebook? Where's that, no where's that notepad from the, the 17th of December that we spoke about? And you'll have to bring that forward so that I can look at it. And we have to stay positive in 2018, guys. From the 1st of January, we have to remain positive. Think positive, be positive, stay positive. You can listen to the cynics and believe success is impossible. Or believe, and that's why we sang that song this morning, that with God, Amen. say it with me, Amen. all things are possible. Amen. What are you believing God for this morning? I want to give you just a moment. What are you trusting God for 20, 2018? What is... What is that next level that you would like to get to in 2018? What is that thing? Think about it quickly. Because I know you've been thinking about it. Did you see it? you see it in front of you? you see it yes. right there? Now trust the Lord that that thing that you are trusting and believing God for is going to happen. Amen. Go into 2018 already with that open mind and open heart that it's going to happen. You have to do that in order to have a successful 2018. <laughs> then this one, I, I love this. My purpose is, and it says dot, dot, dot. And I want to ask you, what is your purpose? A lot of people say to me, Pastor, I don't really know what my purpose is in life. And I'm going to say to you what I've said to the Power Transformation students and the MMO students. It's this. You cannot know your purpose before you know who you are. Work with me this morning. Yes. Because... Your purpose is directly linked and attached and hooked to your identity. Yes. You first have to establish your sure identity in Christ, your Lord and your Savior. Secondly, Amen. you have to know what your worth is, your self-worth. And I always say that's a contradiction in terms, and I contradict myself here now, I'm going to explain. I say that you've got to have a good self-worth, but on the other side of that point, I say you've got to have a good Christ-worth. Mm -hmm. Because when you know who you are in Jesus, you've got a good self-worth. Are you hearing me? Amen. People who know who they are in Christ know their self-worth and they know the third one is their value. Amen. What did Jesus pay to get you, can I ask you? What price did He pay? The ultimate price. He gave His life, exactly that. He gave His life. So what value did Jesus place, place on you? He placed His life on you to bring you back to Him. Then the fourth thing is purpose. So you need to know those first three things and then lock into your purpose. And how do you find your purpose then? Is what is the gift that God has given you? Folks, just by the way, this links up with a word that God has given me for 2018. And He said to me not to share it yet. I'll give it only uh, maybe next week when we have our Christ celebration service on Sunday or then only in the beginning of the new year. But listen, it's part of where we're going in the new year. What is your redemption gift, your foundational gift, your motivational gift? What is that that God has placed on the inside of you? That's a good clue already of what God has called you to do. Yes, indeed. Amen. Are you hearing this? Amen. Then, you need to share your gift. You cannot just keep what God has given you. Next year, there's going to be so much opportunity. You're going to see there's so many changes that we're bringing you next year. I can hardly wait because it's going to be awesome. But I want to say to you, we're going to give you an opportunity to share your gift. Finding your gift and sharing your gift. Where those two link, that's your purpose. Lack a man. That's going to be great. And I can hardly wait to see you operate in your gift that God has given you. That's number two. Number three. Walk with gratitude. And we say there at the bottom there. Each day, take a walk of gratitude. You can't be stressed and grateful at the same time. And I was taught that you could be and there was silence in the congregation. You cannot be stressed and be grateful at the same time. I'm encouraging you next year in 2018. Board yourself up. We've got a couple of days left in 2017. Take a walk of gratitude every day through your garden. You say, Pastor, I haven't got a garden. Walk around the block. Don't make excuses. All right. Take a walk of gratitude. You know what I do? In the evenings, we have two little 
boys called Pekingese dogs in our home. They rule supreme. It's God, the dogs, then us. That's how it works in our home. Now these little dogs, they get spoiled rotten. We love them to bits. And with us having an empty nest now, Des and I have found new life in these two little doggies. All right, now, late at night, I take them out to go and do their business outside, and then we come back into the house. And it's usually about half past 11. Where we stand, and I allow them to do their thing, I look up to the heavens and I see the starry heavens. That's when it's not raining. And I common sense. And I look up to the heavens and I see the stars, and then I have a conversation with God, a conversation of gratitude. And while they're around and they walk and they do this, I say, Father, I thank you for this day that you gave us. Father, I give you praise, honor, and adoration. I thank you. I'm grateful, Father, for what you've given us. I'm grateful that today we had food in our belly. I'm grateful for this place that you've given us that we could have a good night or that we're going to have a good night's rest in. I thank you for motor cars that's got fuel in that I can go from point A to point B. Gratitude. Yes. We always say have an attitude of gratitude that's number three number four be optimistic you've got to move from disappointment to optimism instead of being disappointed about where you are right now think optimistically about where you are going this is a good point sometimes we are blocked in by our present situation and I'm saying to you become optimistic and lock into something yes. positive that you know is going to work for you in the new year. There are, some, there are some skills that I want to enhance, natural skills. I'm not talking about the biblical things. I'm talking about natural things in my own life that I want to enhance. And I have brothers that are around me whom I so appreciate who have skills that I don't have. And I'm tapping into them all the time and I'm learning from them. Do you have people like that in your life? Enhance your natural skills as well, guys. And get to the place where you are optimistic um, about where you are going. Don't, don't live in disappointment. Don't live in, but, uh, uh, the, the, how do people say it? Um, if only. If only I could have this. If only I could be this. If only I could have that. If only. Don't live in if onlys. Lock your mind into the things of God and enhance your skills and your gifts. The next one. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and supper. What are you talking about, Pastor? Healthy Christians make healthy churches. Woo! Glory! Eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a college kid with a maxed out credit card. <laughs> what are we saying through that? It's so important to look after your health, guys. I tell you what. We, our prayer lines for healing will be shorter when we start living more healthy lives as Christians. You said to me, don't go there this morning. I'm going right in there. <laughs> you need to look after yourself. You need to eat healthy. You need to look after your body. It is the temple of the Lord. Amen. Get to the place and look at next year changing your diet. My wife and I, some of you have heard this and I need to say it for, we've got new people I need to say to you this morning. Uh, my wife and I went for a, for a blood test. And what this guy does, he draws blood, just a drop of it, praise the Lord, not just, the, you know, those big ones that they used to pull in the past. That, uh, nowadays it's just a drop. And they put it under a microscope. And this guy put our blood under a microscope and it was on a big monitor. And you see what's happening in your blood. You see the things moving around in your blood. And you get a fright. When the doctor explains to you, oh, those are parasites in your blood. Um, that over there is this kind of cell. When he looked at the parasites, he says, because you've got dogs, that's why you have these parasites. It comes from the dogs. I'm not going to get rid of the dogs. Parasites, I'll deal with you later. But those are the parasites. Then it's got, it shows you, it shows you um, uh, um, what's the stuff that gets stuck in the veins? Cholesterol, thank you. Thanks, Ruben. So you get the cholesterol. You get this, and you see some, the cells are uh, over one another. And he, then the doc, according to your blood and what he's seeing there, he prescribes medicine and he makes it himself. And he deals with all of those things. When I did this, we went back the second time. Those parasites, he gave me medication for it. They were all gone. 
And I saw that and he said to me, you need to change your lifestyle. You cannot eat bread anymore. You cannot eat pastas because it doesn't con your body doesn't convert that into energy. And he gave us a whole list. And, and I went, okay. The things that I cannot eat anymore are the things that I enjoy. Yeah. Brother, listen to me. You know how hard that is. At times when I felt like a snack. Do you want to hear this? A thick piece of ciabatta bread <laughs> with thick butter on it. Oh. With thick peanut butter. <laughs> and a bit of jam. <laughs> and a piece of cheese on top of it. That was my snack. When I bit into that, my teeth marks could be seen in the peanut butter. <laughs> then you know you put on enough. You see, you cannot have bread. You've got to eat bread that doesn't have the yeast. You've got to. Since I've changed all of that, and it's still a process, I feel, folks, listen to me, I feel a million times better health wise. I've had to adapt. You see, because I realize that to be healthy is good not just for me, but for you. I plan to be around for a lot longer because of what Jesus has called me to do, guys. Amen. Yes. So be careful. What you eat, because if you eat the wrong thing, it's going to eat you. Everything happens for a reason. I know people don't want to hear this, but listen. Believe that everything happens for a reason. And good things come from challenging experiences. And the reason I put that picture there is that in that bottle, what you start off with is a caterpillar. But eventually it turns into a butterfly. And, and Lucan spoke a bit about that. He's done Tao transformation. And that's all he's talking about is this caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. It's changed his life because he's realized that through those struggles that we have in life in the cocoon, when we come out, the struggle, the, the measure of the struggle depends how high you are going to fly as a butterfly. Mm. Come on now. Yeah. It's Difficult. Life is hard sometimes, guys. And we cannot see a way out. And we're struggling. But you know that when that little caterpillar is struggling within that cocoon, the struggling pushes the, the nutrition into the wings so that when that thing bursts open, the wings are ready for flight. I'm saying to you, get ready for flight in 2018. Yes. Amen. 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 Thou shalt not be a caterpillar any longer. Thou shalt not have a worm mentality. Thou shalt flutter like a butterfly. Amen. <laughs> Number seven, don't focus so much on the past. Yes, but pastor, if you only realize what happened to me. Stop focusing on the past. Don't be too negative. And I'm saying not too negative because sometimes it just happens. You know, something happens, we get a bit of bad news and for a moment we become negative. I'm saying don't camp there. And stay away from gossip. Yes. Gossip is a killer to anybody. Because I want to say to you, great people talk about projects. Small-minded people talk about other people. Woo! If you cannot say amen, say ouch. <laughs> no. You need to stop being so negative and keep it moving. Keep moving forward. Don't waste energy on gossip, past issues and negative thoughts and things that you cannot control. Invest in the positive present moment that you have. My wife reminds me on a regular basis. She says, this moment is all we have. Let's make the most of it. All we have is right now. Amen. Make the most of it. Yes. I said to someone yesterday, um, I said, you know, this thing that people say, well, I'm just killing time. Killing time. I, I, I just want to bring this in quickly. Time is a gift to you. Do you realize that? Amen. The Bible says make the most of every opportunity. So we need to use time constructively. Yes. There are times that we need to relax and rest and we're coming to that. But use time effectively. Here's a very, very important one. Be mentored and mentor. What does mentoring do for you? It gives you direction, helps you with your leadership, helps you with coaching, advice, training, inspires, support, motivation and success. Mentor someone and be mentored by someone. Yes. Mentoring is a crucial thing. By the way, let me just say this. The leaders that are being, I like the word in Afrikaans, but opgewekt word in hierdie bediening. 
the leaders that are being um, groomed in this ministry. Next year, I'm going to spend a lot of time in leadership development and training and mentoring. Yes. And I'm going to do that with the leaders. They're the leaders. I'm not going to take all of that information and that juicy good stuff and keep it to themselves. They have a responsibility then to coach, mentor, counsel and help the other people. That's the way it's going to work. So our leadership program for next year is off the chart. It's incredible if you see what I've got planned. Now the counseling program that we've had uh, installed all, already over the years has helped a lot of you already that's done the power transformation, that's done the MMO course and the counselor course. It's helped you already to a level that you can get into a position to be able to mentor others. But I'm saying to you, never stop being mentored. Amen. We all need somebody. Homophonals. You can never get to the level where you say, I don't need anybody to mentor me. You do. Number nine, the three E's. Expectation, enthusiasm, and encouragement. And I know we all have expectations. And then we have reality. <laughs> How many have found that that's real in your life? That's my expectation. And then it's like this. When you put a sweet in a channel and a, or like a tube, at the end of that tube, and you put some ants over here, the ants will go towards the sweet, but it's been proved and proven over and over again. The ants do not walk in a straight line. They're all over the place, but eventually they get to the sweet because they can, they can sense it. And you know, those of you who have ants in the house, what a pest they become because you leave just one dark pellet on the floor. And 15 to 20 minutes later, they, I mean, they're all over that thing. They set it far from a mile off. But the way they come to it is all over the place. That is what happens with us. We are like the ants. We get to our destination, but it's like this. Keep your confidence high when life is like this. You will get to your destination. Amen. 